Welcome back. We talked about um, effects of imperialism in Africa. We talked about uh, the rest of Asia, and now we're going to talk about uh, India and the effects of imperialism in India. So first, we need to talk about the British East India Company. They were set up um, by the UK government. They were given permission to um, basically run India. So the company, called the British East India Company, had total control of India, um, purely for economic reasons, but they had direct control, so they were a colony. The company uh, was so rich and powerful, had its own army, and they completely controlled the government. Uh, India was known as the jewel in the crown, so that would be in the crown of Queen Victoria, the Queen of the United Kingdom, and as, as well as the British Empire. Um, so, uh, the reason for this is, India is more valuable than any other colony in the empire. They have 300 million workers. So, like today, in the United States, there are about 300 million people. But in India, available to work, so it doesn't count children, it doesn't count old people. They had, they had 300 million people. It's an unbelievable number of people. Uh, India is the primary supply of cotton. They also have this plant called indigo, which is used. It's a purplish dye that you get from that plant. And they have opium. We already heard about what the British Empire will use opium for. Um super highly addictive drug it's what heroin's made from them and we've talked about that before but cotton is really the huge one um everyone wants that for clothes but those other two are big money makers as well so in addition to raw materials which is our first motive for imperialism we also have the second which is it's also going to be a gigantic market at the time i believe it was the largest market in the world um so Indian people are forced to take these raw materials, give them to the East India Company, and then buy everything from the East India Company. So, like, if it's made out of cotton, they have to pick the cotton, give it to this company, and then buy the cotton-made things from that company. It's uh, really going to be um, an upsetting thing for the colonists, as it was the American colonists who had the same law. So here we have pictures. This is indigo. This is the color indigo. This is cotton, which we've actually seen in class. I've shown you cotton. And these are poppy flowers. Uh, sometimes they're red. They're a very pretty flower. But the, and the seeds are sometimes on things you eat, like um, buns and muffins and things. But uh, it's a super highly addictive drug, and it really makes you pretty much worthless when you're taking it. Now, that's the background. We've already talked about a lot of that um, before. Now we need to talk about this group of people called sepoys. So sepoys are the Indian soldiers in the British Empire's army. So since they're Indian, they are Hindu or Muslim. Those are the two primary religions in the Indian colony. They are not treated equally for lots of different reasons, their skin color, their religion, and just the fact that they did not come from Britain. So uh, these soldiers, even though they're really, really well-trained and effective soldiers, are constantly um, putting up with this racism from the British officers. There was no way an Indian person could become an officer. You had to be British. Um, but at the same time, they are the ones, when the British Empire gets in trouble and they need really top-rate soldiers, the sepoys are the ones they call in to like put down rebellions in other places. So it's going to um, cause resentment with these Indian troops, the sepoys. And that's already there. And then we have this incident. Uh, there's a rumor, and it, as far as we know, it wasn't even a true rumor. But doesn't matter if it's true. The sepoys believed it. The rifle cartridges that um, the British Empire was using were supposedly coated with beef and pork fat. So um, Hindu people do not believe in eating 
pork or beef, and Muslim people do not believe in eating pork. So this is violating both of the religions that the sepoy soldiers might be. In order to fire your rifle, you have to put the cartridge in your mouth to bite off the end of it, to pour the gunpowder into the gun. It is really going to offend these sepoys. They're actually going to refuse to do it. And what we end up with is an event called the Sepoy Rebellion. So you have these soldiers who say, I'm, I'm not putting this in my mouth. It violates my religious principles. And they're going to get beaten and jailed by the officers. When this happens, the way they are treated impacts the way the other soldiers react. So all over India, you're going to see different groups of sepoys who refuse to use these cartridges, and then they end up with a rebellion all over, spreads all over India, and lasts for a year. It's very, it takes a long time for them to put down the troops because this is their army. This, they don't have enough troops in India that are not Indians to put this down. They have to bring in soldiers from other parts of the empire. And eventually, they win. The sepoys are going to be defeated. And the effect is the British government is going to totally take over control. So the Indians had a little bit of say in what went on in India in the past. But after this rebellion, just like when we have slave rebellions that fail, the government is going to totally take over control. In addition, the people who are sent over there Think, hear of all the things the sepoys did. Some of them see it, and it's very violent. Um, and so they think of these people as savages and not people you can trust, which is going to increase the racism that is seen. Now here we have a little picture which demonstrates the racist feelings. So the quote says, and it's what is written down here under the picture, Well then, we shan't blow him from nasty guns, but he must promise to be a good little sepoy. So that means we won't kill him with our guns if he promises to be good. And then take a moment to look at this picture. Look for all the things in here that give you a clue about the imperialist attitudes towards these Indian natives. Make sure you look at their clothes and their facial features and all of that stuff, just like we've done with the other images we've seen in class. And when you are finished, pause it. When you're finished, unpause it and move on to the next part of the lecture. Now, all these things are going on. So we have the underlying resentment of the Indian people. We have the Sepoy Rebellion, which fails. It's very violent. Uh, totally changes the way that Indians are treated. They're treated worse. And it's going to lead to two political parties, really the first two political parties, in, at least in modern India. So the first one, this is their flag. You should recognize this being really similar to the flag of the country, India. We have the Indian National Congress. They are going to fight for rights for the Indian people. They're, they want to be treated equally. Um, and they make a lot of progress. However, after about 20 years, there's going to be another group called the Muslim League that's formed. This is their flag. Probably notice this flag is very similar to the flag of Pakistan. The Muslim League is going to complain that the Indian National Congress is not actually worried about helping the Muslim Indians. They're more focused on the Hindu Indians. So they are going to focus on getting rights for Muslim Indian people. Um, and this is going to directly impact what happens for the rest of Indian history. Now, India had some big positives that they got out of this relationship. Um, because India was such an important colony, the British Empire spends a lot of money making it more efficient and more profitable. So. One thing they do is they build these really great high-quality railroads. At the time, it was the third largest railroad system in the world that the British Empire puts in there, um, which is important for trade and, and growth, economic growth in the long run. Um, they also are just, in general, going to bring their technology with them. So in particular, telephones and telegraph lines are going to be installed in India 
far, far ahead of the rest of the world. Um, which gives them lots of advantages. They're, they've got all this modern technology. These typical colonies are not getting this given to them. It's because of how important and crucial India was to the wealth and power of the British Empire. However, you can't be a colony that ends up having revolutions and rebellions if things are all positive. So, some of the things, it was very difficult for an Indian to own a country, uh, sorry, a company, and the Indian people have to buy things from British companies. Um, it's, this is one of the things that leads to a revolution in the United States, what becomes the United States. It's one of the things that leads to revolution in Ireland, and it's one of the things that leads to revolution in India. Um, in addition, and this is another thing that it has in common with Ireland, the Indian people are told what crops they have to grow. They are not allowed to grow food. They have to grow cash crops, so specifically cotton, indigo, and opium. There's going to be some crop failures, and it leads to famine in India. We've got millions of Indian people starving on the streets, and they still keep growing cash crops. Same thing happens in Ireland at almost exactly the same time. It's a crop failure, but they are not allowed to give the food to the people starving in the famine. They have to ship it out because they're cash crops. Um, and it as we have seen before, when you have a poor, starving group of people, it leads to revolutions. And that's what happens in both of these places as well. Okay, so now we have an activity. If if you missed class, and that's why you're looking at this, you need to look on the assignments page. There is a visualizing imperialism activity that you need to complete. It's very important. You will have a hard, hard time on your test if you do not complete it.